In a Lisp dialect, if we talk about list, we refer to linked list, which are really bad for random access. Therefore, if you use linked list when a vector or a dictionary would be more appropriate, the performance of your program will be really bad. Most Lisp dialects support vector and dictionaries, so you should use those whenever you can. For example, in common Lisp, using the rutils library, the syntax for vectors and dictionary becomes quite simple. We load our utils, enable pretty prints, and load the reader macros. Then a dictionary can be declared simply using sharp and curly braces with the key and values. And we can verify that this is really unstable. Clojure provides a similar syntax by default. Nevertheless, it is true that linked lists are really convenient to be used, and standard libraries usually provides a lot of functions to manipulate them. The question may be, why giving so much importance to linked lists? In common lists we can use the var to declare a variable. In this case, data will contain the list with the symbol plus and then the numbers 1, 2, 3 and 4. Data is a variable that contains a list, but if we run, as we can see, it returns the list itself. But if we run eval, it gives us back 10 which is the result of the sum. A list program is a list, so if we are good at working with lists, we are good at changing our programs the way we want. This is one of the reasons why Lisp offers so many functions to deal with lists, and why Lisp programmers invest time in learning how to work with lists. Being good at working with lists is a prerequisite for writing good macros. For example, let's write a macro that creates a list where each symbol has as value its symbol itself. The goal is to make a let in which the pairs in the declaration are the symbol and the symbol quoted. We can see that using mapcar is really convenient. Symbol list is a list with all the symbols and we create another list in which each element is a list with the symbol and the symbol quoted. We can see with macro expense that this does exactly what we want. This is the list generated using mapcar. Moreover, often the performance of macro expansion is not really important because it only changes compile time, that is when macro are really expanded. The result is that the list programmer he used to write macros and if he has to build a proof of concept, he may decide to use a list instead of a proper database or a data structure more appropriate. Nevertheless, if the program is well structured, it should be simple to replace the data storage in the future. Lists could also be useful in another situation. When the size of a data structure is small, asymptotic analysis may not be accurate. For example, if you have a small lookup table, maybe it's easier and faster to store it in a list. We can compare an example using hash tables. Make hash table may allocate a lot of memory or the factor needed to compute the hash is bigger than just following the cons in a list. Here we can see an example of how to create an hash table in common Lisp that contains simply three keys. Using a property list, we could do just the following and the result would be the same. Which is better? It depends. From a readability point of view, it's probably better the second one. From performance point of view, one has to benchmark. But I wouldn't exclude that the least based approach would achieve a good performance on a lot of assets. The execution speed depends on a lot of factors, and Lisp usually requires a garbage collector. But if it is compiled and you provide enough types information, modern compiler can produce really efficient code. Is it true that Lisp programs are always slow? Absolutely not. As usual, Lisp lets the programmer choose. You can write code fast or you can write fast code. And this is a fantastic chance because one can decide to optimize where it's really needed.